Hello, I'm Dr. Miles Berger. I'm an instructor in neuroanesthesia at Duke University Medical Center. And it's my pleasure to tell you about my work on the uh, determination of the role of Alzheimer's disease pathways in postoperative cognitive dysfunction. Uh, first of all, I have no disclosures. Uh, and then a short outline of what I'll talk about today. First, we'll talk about postoperative cognitive dysfunction and dementia. Next, we'll talk about CSF markers of Alzheimer's disease after anesthesia. And third, I'll talk about the DREAM Innovation Grant uh, proposal that I've submitted. So first, uh, I think many of you probably already have heard of postoperative cognitive dysfunction, uh, a syndrome of difficulties in thinking and memory after anesthesia and surgery. Uh, this syndrome has been described in part uh, well by people in this department, including Dr. Newman, who's our chairman. Uh, he published one of the first seminal papers on this syndrome back in 2001 in the New England Journal. And the first figure from it is shown here, which demonstrates that the patients who have a cognitive uh, deficit early after surgery at approximately six weeks are still impaired approximately five years later. However, uh, Dr. Newman wasn't exactly the first to uh, report on this phenomenon. It had actually been uh, discussed for some number of years. Uh, the first paper that, uh, discussing this phenomenon was actually published more than 50 years ago in The Lancet back in 1955. Uh, today, we don't use this kind of language, but they called it adverse cerebral effects of anesthesia on old people. And their article was basically a case series that described patients who had tr problems with thinking and memory after anesthesia and surgery. And they included this quotation in the article about one of their patients. He's never been the same since his operation. And I think that's largely the same way that today we describe some of these patients who seemed okay before surgery, but they just can't quite figure things out or do things as well afterwards. So now I'd like to shift and talk a little bit about POCD and dementia because there's a number of laboratory studies that suggest that perioperative care actually promotes Alzheimer's disease. And on this slide from a recent review article that we've written, uh, we've included a number of different mechanisms by which anesthetic drugs or surgery could actually act on Alzheimer's disease pathways. Conceivably, if anesthesia or surgery accelerates Alzheimer's disease, this could explain part of uh, the syndrome of postoperative cognitive dysfunction. The uh, <clears throat> first paper looking at this showed that uh, anesthetics could actually increase the clumping or oligomerization of a protein called amyloid beta that's involved in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and this graph here shows that clumping uh, as sort of illustrated by this gentleman who's uh, sifting for gold. Uh, similarly, in this experiment, the uh, heavy amyloid beta clumps don't go through the column, and that's what you see in the lower two lines there with isoflurane and halothane. Uh, the amyloid beta is just too thick to get through that column, just like the gold nuggets are too thick to get through the pan. And Another paper showed that if you expose mice to, mice to isoflurane for about two hours, a commonly used anesthetic drug, uh, their levels of amyloid beta in their brain went up. But a number of questions remain from all of these basic science studies. Does this really happen in our patients? Is this clinically relevant? And if so, what sort of time course does this operate on? So to address some of these questions, we started a study several years ago now called MADPIA, Markers of Alzheimer's Disease After Propofol or Isoflurane Anesthesia. And this is a prospective uh, single-blind randomized control trial in which we took neurosurgical patients uh, who had drains in their backs so we could obtain some of their cerebrospinal fluid or the fluid around their brain and spinal cord. And we took CSF samples just after the induction of anesthesia and surgery, and then again 10 and 24 hours later. And what we found here is that the ratio of tau to amyloid beta goes up in approximately 40% of these patients, uh, whereas in the other 60%, the curve basically stays flat. Now this is concerning because an increased ratio of tau to A beta in your CSF is predictive of the development of Alzheimer's disease. 
In fact, a ratio of greater than 0.5 is highly sensitive and specific for predicting the development of Alzheimer's disease. Here, many of our patients are at about twice that ratio. It's concerning. But what is the mechanism of these perioperative changes in Alzheimer's markers? And what role do they play in POCD? Well, I won't go into all the biochemical details, but there's a number of different pathways that affect the synthesis of these AD markers as well as their clearance. And those are depicted here in this figure. In the uh, Dream Innovation Grant, we basically propose to study these pathways. So our first aim is to assess uh, metabolism pathways for these two proteins, amyloid beta and tau, in the CSF of surgical patients who develop postoperative cognitive dysfunction versus controls. And our second specific aim is to measure other related pathways, pathways of synaptic function, immunologic response, and cholesterol metabolism in the CSF of these patients who develop postoperative cognitive dysfunction versus controls. And what we're trying to do is to figure out which of these pathways on the right is involved in these markers going up in the figure on the left. And here's just a brief uh, outline of the study that we're going to use to uh, obtain the CSF for these patients. This is an ongoing study, a follow-up to the study I mentioned earlier called MADCOPIA, in which basically we're taking patients 60 years of age or older and putting in lumbar catheters so we can measure their CSF markers before and after anesthesia, and these patients will undergo pre-op and post-operative cognitive testing. Our plan is to take the CSF from those patients who do develop postoperative cognitive dysfunction and compare it to the CSF of those patients who do not develop postoperative cognitive dysfunction. We will use a proteomic analysis to look at the various pathways in the previous slide in the CSF of these patients. So I'd like to thank you uh, for your attention. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Matthew, Dr. Newman, and Dr. Warner, my mentors, uh, the neuroanesthesia division in particular, Dr. McDonough and Dr. James, uh, the CARE Clinical Anesthesia Research Endeavor staff listed there on the right, and finally, I would like to thank you, our generous Dream Campaign uh, donors. Thank you for your support.